Um, and uh, welcome to the Microsoft Defender for Identity webinar. Um, as was mentioned, we'll be chatting about how and why uh, you might want to become an advisor for our product engineering team. Uh, today, you're lucky to have Daniel Lynch, who is our Senior Product Marketing Manager, who I think he said he loves really tricky, deeply technical questions, as uh, many marketers do. Um, so if you have those, please put those in the chat. Uh, then we have Daniel Naim, who is our su Subject Matter Expert, or SME, for all things engineering for Defender for Identity. Um, and he's got the yellow background here because uh, he's always a ray of sunshine, or it's a nod to his newly bleached hair, which which hopefully you'll be able to see when he starts presenting. Um, and then myself, Katie Rickman, I am the glue that holds this whole crazy team together. Kind of kidding, um, but really I'm the lead for our Microsoft 365 Defender Customer Connection Program or CCP. And that enables customers like you to connect with our engineering teams and influence our product planning and priorities. Um, but wait, there is more. Uh, we also have some additional members from the Defender for Identity team here to help with questions as they come through the chat window. So feel free to chat away. For our agenda today, it's pretty packed, so hopefully we'll get through it all. Um, I'll quickly be running through uh, what it takes to become a Microsoft Defender for Identity, and uh, that's really the key reason why we're here today. Um, then we'll have Lynch covering what we're seeing in the market around emer the emerging category of ITDR or Identity Threat Detection and Response um, and how we at Microsoft are thinking about the comprehensive protection for all of your identities and identity infrastructure. Uh, then with that background and kind of the framing from the ITDR discussion, Naeem will share some of the recent private previews and upcoming opportunities for our advisor community or the customer connection program. Uh, to really help you get involved in um, influencing those. And then last but definitely not least, um, I'll be walking through the Customer Connection Program in more detail, uh, which is the private community of advisors for our product engineering team. So with that, we'll get into it. Okay, so why are you all here today? Why are we all here today? Um, this, is, this is really for you to help us help you better secure your organization and your customers by joining the Customer Connection Program and becoming a Defender for Identity Advisor. Uh, the way to do that is to go through aka.mswacjoinccp and there'll be a sign up form um, that'll walk you through a you know, quick overview of what is the Customer Connection Program or CCP, um, as well as all the information that we need from you to join it. Um, we learn from your experiences, your pain points, your needs, recommendations for improvement um, for not only our current set of solutions, but also we'll be sharing with you our roadmaps and planning um, and private previews that you can test out. Um, and this is, this is the way that we really put the customer and your needs at the center of product development. So if you only take away two things from this presentation today, please let it be that one, Microsoft truly cares about creating better security solutions to meet your business needs in this ever-changing market. And two, please join the Customer Connection Program at aka.mswacjoinccp. And if you're already a CCP member, then you can go straight to that second link, which is a little bit longer, aka.mswacm365d private preview sign up and sign up for the Defender for Identity private preview ring, which is just recently launched. And we'll talk about that more later on in the presentation. But those would be kind of the, the two things. We really want to hear from you. And two, please join up so that we can hear your voice at aka.mswack join CCP. Um, before I turn it over to Lynch to go into the ITDR story, Daniel Naim, anything else you, want, you wanted to add here? Yes, uh, hello. It's, uh, hello everyone. So exciting to uh, see and talk to everyone. It's been a while since we've done those. Um, so thank you for joining today. Um, Let's talk about uh, the elephant in, in the room uh, first and foremost. I know there are going to be tons of questions about roadmap and about features. Uh, obviously, since it's a public webinar, the, we will not be able to cover everything. But as Katie mentioned, 
if you want to speak directly with us, you can join the CCP and the preview program. And I promise you we can dig into any uh, any roadmap item that you want to see, any improvement that you'd like to see in the product. Uh, please, we are thirsty for this kind of feedback and we are thirsty uh, to hear what you, uh, what you have in mind. So please keep in mind that uh, we will not be able to share everything today, um, uh, but obviously this will be interesting. Uh, I promise this will be interesting uh, a lot. Uh, so, Daniel, do you want to take us through the uh, what is an ITDR, the ITDR world? Um, why do we think it's important and why we are doing so much investments around that lately with the recent announcement that we have done uh, earlier this month? Yeah, and I, I fully understand that I am the opening act to all the cool stuff that you and Katie are going to share at the end. So I do promise everybody out there that I will go through as quickly as possible. But kind of to Daniel's point, um, we want to provide a little bit of insight into you know, where we're focused, where we see different trends in the market, and hopefully give a little bit of um, a deeper understanding into why some of the cool stuff Daniel wants your help with is, is coming down the pike. So what is ITDR? Um, you know, I'll, I'll spell it out, Identity Threat Detection and Response. Um, it, it's really a, an emerging category in response to the increasing identity-based attacks and tactics that a lot of cyber criminals are using. Um, from a Microsoft perspective, we really see it as kind of that overlap where identity and access management comes together with the security teams and extended detection and response. Um, you know, and, and having teams and a lot of expertise and experience in both of these avenues, we're, we're really seeing how those teams not only have to come together um, and speak the same language, but also the uniqueness of what they need to see in order to do their job uh, accurately and effectively. So if we start to think about what that secret sauce is or, or what goes into um, a strong ITDR strategy or solution. If we can jump to the next slide. There's really three areas and you're gonna see this mirrored in what Daniel's gonna take you through uh, a little bit later on, right? Is we really see, and, and I, I love this, this aspect that I'm gonna shamelessly steal from um, somebody else that says it all the time, but a lot of ITDR happens well before you're actually even met with an attack. Right. How do you set up those preventative measures to make sure that you can stop as many potential attacks or potential breaches as possible? Um, but then I love this this second stat here around, you know, more than three quarters of businesses understand that prevention alone isn't going to be the, the silver bullet. It is not going to solve all of their problems and they're likely to have someone be able to bypass whatever they have in place within the next year alone. So it just really resonates with the fact that, yes, you need prevention. You need to try and stay ahead of trends, different strategies, and, and make sure that you have the, the right posture. But you also need the ability to detect those situations where someone is able to bypass those and, and also ultimately respond. And we'll get a little bit more detail into each one of these in, in the coming slides. Um, but if we if we dig in a little bit more in the prevention, I know I kind of talked about it a little bit, but if we could jump to the next. There's really two areas where we're focused and you're going to see Daniel talk to some of these elements in, you know, what we have done with other private preview uh, customers that have worked with us and where we are going to add a little bit more value going forward. And it really starts with those access controls, right? So we, we touched upon identity and access management and identity admins being a critical element to uh, ITDR. And, and this is really where it starts to show through is do you have the understanding of access controls, who's able to get in, who shouldn't be allowed to access this data or application. Um, but then more broadly, it's really about understanding your overall identity posture. So in the same way you have those access controls and protections on your identities, whether they're human or workload, how well do you understand everything supporting that, whether that's the policies, the permissions, or the identity infrastructure? Like how well are you able to proactively assess potential gaps in your protection get those covered and and really know where attackers are, are targeting to try and bypass what you have in place. Um, and then jump into the next piece. Um, I'm shamelessly, as I often do, going to steal from how Daniel describes detections, but it's really around having best of breed identity detections. So making sure that you can spot identity based attacks, you know, 
immediately? How quickly do you understand that an identity attack is happening and can address it? But then you also have to go a layer deeper or a layer broader, if you will, around best of suite. And, and that really comes into how well you can correlate those identity specific detections and specific data and, and telemetry with broader security signals and really bake it out as part of that XDR solution so that you can spot maybe those more advanced attacks or where, where an identity based attack has been successful and now they're targeting other elements. Uh, and then finally, and, and then I will mercifully pass it over to Daniel, we can start talking about all the great stuff we have done with other customers, um, is really around response. And you're gonna see the trend of, of twos as, as followed all the way through to this one, but it's really, again, two areas, right? Intelligent automation. How well can you eliminate those maybe minutes or seconds in response time by leveraging AI and automation to, okay, I've detected something has happened, how quickly can I respond? And you know, there's um, we've published a, a ton of blogs and other collateral around how quickly uh, bad actors are actually able to start moving laterally within your organization after uh, compromising your credentials. And it's, it's 72 minutes. So just it just goes to show, you know, even if you have the best SOC team, if they go to lunch for an hour, you've got 12 minutes, right? So it just kind of really highlights that fact that automation and intelligent automation that's put forward to try and help you respond faster is really critical. And then response efficiency. We talked about how identity and access management, those identity admins have to you know, work in, in really tight conjunction with the SOC teams. And so when we talk about response efficiency, it's understanding what each of those critical personas needs to do their job and making sure that everything they see or need is, is within that, that view, but also prioritized. So everything from posture recommendations to detections of you know, potential compromise and all the way through to remediation activities, how well can we present that to each of those unique personas and make sure that that it's prioritized so they know where to focus first. All right, so I flew through that. I'm gonna take a breath. I'm sure we have some questions in the chat, so I will jump in and, and start um, answering all of the technical ones as, as Katie mentioned. But, um, you know, I do wanna tee up and, and really just highlight the fact that, I'm gonna say it again in a little bit, we really need your help. Um, and there's a lot of avenues that Daniel and team have been working on with different customers that have turned out really cool. And I know he's going to walk you through right now, um, but there's even cooler ones that are coming. And I know I'm totally biased in saying that, but I really look forward to having the opportunity to work with you and um, talk to you more. So Daniel, I'll kick it over to you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, as Daniel is now monitoring the chat, I invite every one of you to send him the most technical questions that you can uh, please do so. It will be it will make my day. Um, we also have other uh, SMEs who will be capable uh, of answering, but we'll see how Daniel turns red uh, when he read out the, the question out loud. Um, so what I want to talk to you about uh, before we deep dive into what I need from you, uh, let's do a quick overview around the engagement that we have done with the community so far. Um, I bet that some of you have been with us, uh, been here uh, because they are following my amazing Twitter, which I tend to tweet things about. Um, now I think we've, you can even see us, which is great because I have this uh, live button and this is the yellow hair that uh, Katie was mentioning uh, previously, as you can see now. Uh, so, hello everyone, I'm Daniel and uh, you'll be able to see the rest maybe now. Um, so, enough with the introduction, let's get into business. So, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, many of you who come because uh, you're following uh, MDI or myself on Twitter and a few months ago I've uh, published this tweet. Uh, I was talking with a friend of mine, uh, one of the engineering uh, team leads uh, that I'm working with uh, and he told me that some of his uh, software engineers are working around the clock uh, 
but they don't understand the value of what they are doing. I think that it was like a bug or a, or um, or no, we don't have a bugs. So we are we have undocumented features. Sorry, um, it was uh, it was an un undocumented feature that we had to deal with. Um, and then he told me that his team was working behind the the clock in order to improve that and uh, and to fix that. And he wants to get some validations from customer. And and then we realized that uh, some of the engineers are never uh, have the chance to the, the ones that are actually writing the code ever never never have the chance to actually see how the things that they are working are implemented. So I reach out in Twitter. I reach out to the customer uh, connection program that we have. We managed to find out two brave volunteers. Uh, they are probably here in the in the session as well. Um, one of them from uh, uh, OneVin, another from Sequoise, um, and we turn up. It turned out to be um, a regular session that we do once a month. We bring customers into a conversation call directly with the engineers. Obviously, talking with product managers is something that uh, is uh, is a common. Microsoft runs on. Uh, something that we call being customer obsession, but this is the first opportunity that we allow um, customers talk directly, uh, bi-directionally conversation with uh, with the engineers. Um, those meetings goes 50%. Uh, the customer, uh, the security analysts are showing us how they use the product, what they like and what they not, and the other 50% of the time is spent us updating them around things that we have worked on, and we not once uh, managed to uh, see how customers are working and were able to address something uh, immediately uh, after the call to improve their life. So I invite everyone, like I hope that I will have this much of a backlog of customers who want to discuss directly with MDI. Uh, just put your email in the chat uh, and we'll be able to reach out. Obviously, uh, it's uh, you only, you have to do that as well as with the customer connection program and with the MDI specific private preview. Um, but I think uh, we have a session schedule for uh, July and we're waiting for something in August. I can promise you this is going to be an interesting an interesting session to you as well. And I'm going to do a self promote for a second because it's it's a product promote. If you're not following me on Twitter, you should really do that now because uh, I often. Uh, publish some of the items that we are working on as well. So this is just in one engagement that we've done with, uh, with uh, the community. Uh, another engagement that uh, we have done, uh, which you can see in the slide now, is, the bill, is, is an engagement that is an M365 Defender wide engagement. I think since the dawn of time, since the, if you've been with MDI uh, since ATA, you would know that the ability to do an effective investigation has been improving over the years, uh, but still, um, and and obviously the product is still alerting on uh, on items, and you want to be able to tune those alerts to make sure that you're only alerted about what is important or what you uh, what you classify as a non-benign positive. Um, actions and all and only on true positive so this is why we released i think i've been hearing this feedback in my twitter in my dms emails all around i want to have the ability to do a granular exclusions when the user is logging into a device from from so he's doing a remote code execution from this device do exclude it. I want to see when the administrator is being using a device which is not this device, I want to be alerted on. Up until now, you could only uh, choose one of them. Uh, this is a direct engagement by uh, that was driven by customers uh, that I bet that they are here on the call. Um, and not just uh, the ability to do operations between those entities, but also wildcard. Let's say that I want to exclude all of the devices for my network scanner. All I need to do is just uh, write down network scanner asterisk, and it will be excluding automatically all of those uh, for previous, for uh, future uh, alerts that are being raised. This is not an this is not an exclusive MDI experience. We talked about uh, briefly about the XDR experience and the best of uh, best of suits. This is an experience that is available for for all uh, Microsoft Def MDX, Microsoft Defender for identity, endpoint, office, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, 
and it was driven mainly with Microsoft Defender for Identity uh, customer uh, connection program. Um, and last but not least, this is something that is still not live, um, while the other two, or this one is live, uh, and the previous one that you saw is the ability to, to talk to us directly. The last one that we're going to talk to uh, around recent uh, engagement is a work that we have done with the Secure uh, Score team. We released around five new reports and updated at the context of um, of uh, two existing ones. If you'll go to the portal right now, you will not see it because this is still in a private preview. We are waiting to hear feedback around that. Um, but some of you lucky ones, if you're maybe if you're because you are registered to the private preview of uh, Secure Score, or you managed to be the lucky ones that uh, uh, that got uh, that got that, you can go into the portal, see the, the updated one, and I'm looking to hear your feedback. Um, this is uh, something that will go live for the rest of the customers on. Uh, for, for if you don't see it, it will go live on Monday. Um, so the engagement that we had with the, the private preview community was what reports they want to see, what is the logic um, of each report. Um, so obviously we invite you to do, to do that uh, in future engagement as well. So we've walked through um, recent uh, engagement that we've done with the community. So you must be asking yourself, OK, those are done. What I can do in the future? And this is where we need you. Right, Daniel? 100%. And I, I think like I just want to reiterate from earlier that we would love to have you help us kind of focus roadmap and everything. Please stay tuned to Katie's portion at the end here so that, you know, we can get you as part of that community and help having those more detailed discussions. We really just wanted to call out some of the things that um, I know Daniel addressed at the beginning, some of the, the areas where we know you're going to have questions. And so we'd like to dangle that carrot a little bit more and say, hey, please join the CCP. Please engage in these conversations. We really do need you. Um, and you know, with that, Daniel, I, I can let you kind of touch on some of these that I know you, you really want to tease out with, with some of the attendees here. But um, Again, just please do join and, and stay tuned. Yeah, let's pick uh, things that might be interested for everyone. Uh, I've kind of picked some of the preview programs that we're going to have for the next uh, six months. Um, I think the one of the most interesting ones that uh, that we can discuss is the fact that Microsoft Defender for Identity is expanding beyond the Active Directory world. Um, all this webinar is assuming that you have, you know, what is MDI, what MDI is, and you have some basic knowledge. Um, and this is kind of a blessing and a curse because you know what MDI is, and you're aware that is something that you install in Active Directory, maybe an ADFS, um, and this is this protects your on-premise identity uh, infrastructure and identities. Um, but we realize that we want to live up. Uh, for our names, like we are Microsoft Defender for Identity. We need to be security uh, offering when it comes to detection, prevention, uh, and, and remediation for the identity all across. Uh, we briefly discussed this with an ITDR as a concept, and we realized that we are not Microsoft, uh, that we shouldn't be Microsoft only. Um, we, are, we will be releasing detections that are based on malicious and compromised activities on third party applications like Okta, Ping, uh, similar to how we do detections with Azure Active Directory. Um, and also we will go beyond um, the identity infrastructure into areas that we are not present at the moment. Um, two of them, um, ADCS, which is the Honestly, it's, an, it's, an, it's a private preview that will be open in a week or two, uh, basically installing MDI sensor into an ADCS um, and the ability to collect the data uh, and protect uh, against attacks that are involving certificates issuing and templates. And you know the attack vector, You, uh, everyone on the call know the attack vector as much as I do. Um, and further down the line, we're going to have the AAD Connect sensor, which is another flavor of a sensor that we uh, that we will be releasing. Uh, so we touched upon third parties. We touched upon um, AD Connect uh, and ADCS. I think I'm going to get a question in the chat about what what about ADDS. 
this is also down the line maybe in the next in, in not in the next uh, few months so it's not really uh, uh, ready for a preview program but worry not um, we will update uh, CCP when when uh, when it's ready um, I think one of the last things that I want to talk to is um, the sensor unification roadmap uh, sorry not roadmap items sensor unification preview um, basically we understand that MDE and MDI um, Obviously, they are under the same team and they are under the same umbrella, defender umbrella, and there is no reason that we need to have a dedicated MDE sensor or MDI sensor. Uh, so we will be integrating uh, natively in Windows uh, together with MDE. Uh, this is a preview program uh, that we will be ready, uh, what we will need you to use uh, in the upcoming uh, months as well. Um, we hope to start uh, working with design part with uh, dedicated design partners in the in a month or two. So these are the few items that I had like in mind that we can discuss. Anything else that uh, you think the audience will be interested in discussing? Nope, I think this is a, this is probably a good teaser and then some <laughs> to get them hopefully interested in joining the community where they can learn more because everyone in the community needs to have a non-disclosure agreement with Microsoft um, so that they can actually be a part of it and hear all this great stuff that's coming uh, down the pike. Um, but uh, to kind of talk about more the, the customer connection program, um, which is our private community for connecting with those users under NDA. Here's kind of our one slider overview of what it is. It does consist of a group of our customers, partners and MVPs, your Microsoft most valuable professionals, um, representing over at this point, uh, over 240 countries. You can kind of see where they're at on the map there. Um, and this is really our way to connect with you, understand the user experiences for our products, um, for both those that are on the market today, as well as we'll go through your roadmap calls and focus groups and other ways that we're engaging with the community to share what's coming, share our strategic direction, um, share bits and bytes around the features that are coming in private previews for you to actually get your hands dirty and test them out and let us know uh, how we're doing. Are we on the right path? Does this preview meet your needs? Um, things like that. So um, how you can help is by being honest, being constructive, uh, giving us constructive criticism so that we can understand where we're lacking and what we can do better, um, providing real world examples of why you're having those pain points, what you're seeing and how we can help. Um, and then, yeah, just be open about asking for what you need, because this is really the, the candor that we're looking for within this community so that we can be better um, and provide better solutions to you. So with all that said, we have got uh, your how to sign up. I know I touched on this a little bit earlier in the presentation as well, but it's really kind of three steps in terms of uh, getting involved. First step is joining the Customer Connection Program at aka.mswec.joinccp or J-O-I-N-C-C-P. Um, that process does take, um, the form itself does take say five to 10 minutes or so to go through the full form, fill it out, read the uh, disclosure agreements and things like that. Um, and then it is about a one week SLA to get you onboarded into the program because one of the things we do have to do is check to make sure that you have a non-disclosure agreement with Microsoft. Um, if you don't have an NDA with Microsoft, you can connect with your uh, Microsoft contact um, and get signed up for an NDA before joining the program, but we will be checking that. Um, then after that one week kind of review and onboarding, then you can sign up for the private preview ring. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as well, but that's a way for you to test all of these great new previews that are going to be coming through for Defender for Identity in the next, you know, three, six, nine months. Um, <clears throat> And we'd love to have you sign up for that as well. Now, if you're already in the program, you can jump right to step number two of just signing up for the new Defender for Identity private preview ring. 
Um, that does take about, say, two, possibly even three weeks, but ideally two or less weeks uh, to get you onboarded to that ring when you provide us with your tenant ID. Um, so then we're flighting the feature to the tenant that you've chosen um, for these previews for you to go ahead and test those out. And then last but definitely not least is once you're all signed up and ready to go, you've got private previews in your tenant, um, start engaging, start providing that feedback, start testing out uh, the features that we're providing. Um, we'd love to hear from you. This is how we learn. Um, your feedback is the, the breakfast of champions for us. Next, we want to talk about the different types of engagements that we have through the Customer Connection Program. Private previews is a big one, um, but there are a few others as well. These are kind of our, our core ways that the engineering team engages with this private community. One, we do host roughly weekly community calls, and those community calls could be around our roadmap, you know, six to 12 month roadmap of what's coming down the pike um, so that we can start to get your feedback on our direction. Um, it could also be an open call for a private preview. We're going to do a deep dive into that private preview and uh, opening the call up to the community. Um, so a couple examples of those community calls there. Then we have quite a few roadmap and research surveys that we run, and that's our way to really collect the insights from you around your experiences to help to impact our, our planning um, and development. Then we have focus groups that we run. Uh, we actually just had a focus group last week that we ran two weeks ago, so we're probably doing those a couple of times a month or so. Um, and that's great to really do a deep dive into a specific problem area or a specific product um, where we're looking to kind of understand what is how like, how are you using this feature? Um, where are you having challenges? Um, and really dive into it deeply with us so that we can understand and take that feedback back, learn from it, understand your experience and uh, kind of apply it to how we're planning or even just validate some assumptions that we might have already had. And last but not least, we've got the private previews. Um, so the private previews, I'll actually hand it over to Daniel Naim to talk a little bit more about how we run our private previews through the different rings that I'd mentioned before that you were able to sign up for. Um, but Daniel, if you want to go ahead and take this slide, that'd be great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'd love to do that. So let's take you under, uh, we'll do an under the hood session about how, um, how Microsoft uh, Defender X um, releases new features. So obviously there are features that are either small or we we are confident about, and once they are finishing the development cycle, they're going in straight into GA. Uh, obviously those uh, can be uh, bug fixes or improvements that we are certain about. But for most of the important or big item, big ticket items that we are working on, like we discussed today, and you and uh, and you're seeing. Uh, we uh, have this method of uh, ringing, um, and this is how we uh, this is how we work. Basically, we are inviting you in to join into the private preview ring, um, which is the most important ring in my opinion, uh, because a uh, you get to uh, to check the uh, features first, b you get to shape them. Um, in according to your needs and 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 tailor to uh, what suits you. Um, so the way that we work, let's say that we have a feature which is uh, the tuning alerts that uh, went uh, live a few weeks ago. The first phase is we are collecting feedback uh, from customers. Um, I everyone every uh, customer that wants to meet with the engineering team and myself included, um, you are welcome to do so. I'm having uh, I'm trying to have around 40 or 50 percent of my calendar um, around customers meetings um, that are actually using the product or planning on using the product and wants to provide feedback. We and they identify gaps or uh, we pitch them new ideas and if they are interested in them, we are uh, including them in a private preview ring, uh, either which in a limited preview or in a standard preview, which is the private preview ring one. Uh, typically, this is where we a feature lives anywhere between one week to three months. 
uh, feature can be under private preview uh, for that amount of time, either because we are going through cycles, because we uh, some of the improvements are not matching what we wanted to achieve. Um, obviously, this doesn't mean that features that are going through a private preview are not tested or not validated. Those are uh, going into uh, test and verification. So you can install them on your uh, production environments. Um, we have to, uh, we, we have the ability to opt in into a certain features within a private, within the private preview community, but we, but this is not a guarantee. If you're enjoying in a private preview, you are aware of the fact that you might get features that, uh, uh, that are new and you'll not be, uh, you not be able to revert back unless you're opting out from the private preview. Um, think of it like, you know, when you have like this, uh, do you want to try the new layout of Teams or Outlook and you are opting in and then you can actually provide feedback. But this time around uh, with obviously with security features, we give you a heads up around two to three weeks in advance when new private preview going to start. Um, and then after a week, between one week to three uh, months, uh, we are releasing the feature to a public preview. This is where we update the public documentation. This is where basically the, uh, we can we cannot hide the feature anymore as it's updated uh, to customers and potential customers. And obviously, uh, when we see that everything is working correctly and as expected, uh, we are trying to make sure that the, that. Uh, between public pre preview into a GA is as minimum time as possible. And we aim to keep it around week to two weeks at maximum. This is where we will publish a blog post around this feature. Again, it's depend on, dependent on the feature. What doesn't go through um, the, the, the preview links that I was uh, mentioning? Uh, MDI new alerts usually go straight to GA because we test them and we do validations on the detector based on the data that we have. And we don't want to delay security offering um, that we already have. So those go straight to the GA. We might tune them a little bit throughout the process, but we believe that it's better to have something that you can see and you can tune yourself. Um, and then uh, other than keeping the data to ourselves until we are 5,000% sure that the, the, the data is accurate. So we only release it when we are 3,000% sure that the detection is working as expected. Um, so, but on the other end, there are many features that we discussed today in the engagement uh, slide that we've seen, um, including this, uh, the, the certificate server sensor um, and so on and so forth. Uh, those usually go through a private preview uh, rings um, and we want your feedback on to discuss with you and, and to make sure this, this is um, um, fits, uh, uh, what you want, what you want to see. What we are not discussing today, and this is also be offered with the customer uh, connection program, um, which is not feature oriented, but basically, obviously, not all of our knowledge is in is in our uh, mind. Uh, some of the great features that uh, we have been doing lately are directly from an engagement uh, from from the community. So. It's not, it's a bit, it's a bi-directional. It's not that, hey, these are the new previews that we have. Uh, every planning season, we are having a roadmap session with a, a customer a connection program. And this is where I share, this is what we plan for do for the next six months. Let me know what you think about that. Um, and again, uh, we do that twice a year. Um, and obviously we have an open uh, communication to do that even throughout the year. Um, if it's a, it's a nice feature and we think we might push it uh, even outside of the planning uh, work. I think based on the number of questions around the roadmap in the chat too. Um, Maybe we now have a new one. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited, Katie. I think that number of uh, CCP um, attendees and, and customers is going to grow. So um, uh, like we said, you know, especially with the excitement around some of the topics that Daniel listed out earlier, um, you know, those are not roadmap specific, but we'd love for you to join the, the CCP, engage there, help us you know, prioritize and, and decide where to focus. And um, as always, throw all the tough questions at the other Daniel. And um, so really excited to, to engage with you more. And thank you for all of the questions. Um, we're gonna keep trying to answer them as, as they come in. 
Awesome, lovely. Okay, so I think one of the last slides we've got uh, in regards to the private community or customer connection program is kind of the, the mix of different community members where we have currently in the M365 Defender program um, over 3,000 members, uh, primarily their customers under MDA and under NDA, about 65% of them. Um, the rest are our elite partner community, um, our MVPs or Microsoft Most Valued Professionals, as well as some Microsoft voices in there as well. They're helping be the voice of their customers. Um, as I mentioned before, minimum requirement, minimum bar to entry for that program is that you just have an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement with Microsoft. Um, and again, we'll check that so you don't have to you know, see if you do before signing up. We'll go through and check that for you and let you know. Um, and if not, then uh, you'll just want to connect with your Microsoft point of contact um, and they can help you uh, get signed up for an NDA. Some of the additional targeting requirements that we're looking for, criteria that we're looking for, um, is just really around having that depth of technical knowledge of being a user or working with users of these products so that you can share your experiences um, and you know, best practices, uh, use, use cases, and you know, suggestions, recommendations for improvement is really a big thing that we're looking for here. Um, so that's kind of the, the core of who we're looking to have in this community. And one of the great things that we're seeing within here too is, yes, it's a great platform to connect with the engineering team and to uh, influence where we're going and influence the features that are coming out, but it's also a great community to connect with peers within the community. So oftentimes we'll see people that just throw out a question to the community around, you know, hey, what's the best practice around X, Y, Z? And I'm looking to kind of understand how other customers are approaching this um, and then getting feedback from others and just connecting with peers in the community. So that's a great thing to do as well. Um, so once you join, you can kind of see the different questions and comments and feedback that are coming through just the open community chat channels, um, as well as the engagements kind of more formalized coming from our engineering teams. So with that, in closing, uh, thank you so much. Um, hopefully, Two things that you took away from the beginning is that we really want to hear from you and we really want to put the customer um, and their voice at the center of our product development. Uh, but we need you to sign up for the customer connection program to really be able to hear that voice and to be able to share with you some of the great things that are coming um, so that you can provide us that feedback. So join the program, aka.mswec, join CCP. And then once you've joined the program, or if you've already joined the program, signing up for that private preview ring, um, aka.mswac M365D private preview sign up. Um, so thank you all so much. And I think we'll just have some time for questions. Um, so if the team wants to maybe start to come off mute, if there's any questions that came through chat uh, that we want to talk to live, that would be great. Yeah, so this is a question, I guess, for uh, I'm going to shoot it at Daniel Lynch um, and maybe uh, also Katie. But the question was, uh, do you offer test free test tenants to test these private preview security features on? Uh, just in case uh, the new feature may not be suitable for production tenant. Katie, I, I saw you nodding. I can let you take that one if if uh, if you're interested, but I, we do have trials available. I think for the CCP, we'd like to have, you know, active customers. Um, I, I'm happy to follow up and get an answer on um, what we can do for test tenants. Yeah, and, and that's that's pretty much the same answer here is uh, we're not providing test tenants um, or even guidance around the setup of test tenants through the community, uh, but there is the trials that you can take advantage of if you would like to. Uh, we're really looking for the voices of the, you know, the users, but through trials, that's definitely something where you can test things out and provide your voice that way as well. Any other questions? While we are waiting for uh more questions um, i usually put a slide with my email 
um, and I forgot to do this this time around. So I'll find a way out. How do I do that with uh, to the publish uh, live uh, announcement? But I, in order to show you how much we want to hear the feedback from you, um, and obviously uh, we we want you to uh, join the CCP community. I'm going to put my uh, email address. So if you have any concerns about joining CCP, something that you're not sure, I want to talk to you directly and, and, and explain you how valuable it is to you and to me. Um, and also if you want to discuss, uh, invite me to, uh, and you're part of, already part of the CCP, um, I and you want me to discuss with you on more uh, specific roadmap items, uh, I'd be happy to do that as well. So I'll find a way out. Can I do that while we are taking more questions? So Daniel, this was, uh, might be for Daniel Naeem, this might be for you. Um, I think it's just more of a feature requirement uh, request. A great feature would be an automatic creation of Honey Token users, which are realistically built and have history. Um, some customers have created wow. tokens. Um, and then going into Honey Token devices, is there a way just to mimic them without having them um, to actually be devices, virtual or physical? Love it. That's something that we can definitely consider. Um, I personally believe in the concept of an ANI token. If you are not familiar with uh, ANI token in MDI, basically you can put uh, fake the fake accounts that exist in your Active Directory. So whenever uh, something happened to them, we will be alerting on them on authentication activity, reconnaissance activity, group membership changes, uh, if you're changing their attributes. Um, and I understand the, the times it might take to create those on the Active Directory. I think a great initiative can be creating them ourselves. Uh, wink, wink, that MDI can do. Not promising anything. I can't, but wink, wink. Is being recorded. <laughs> I just winked. <laughs> um, I did see a quick question in here about the differences between the customer connection programs that are out there because there are more than just the M365 Defender customer connection program. So you might have heard of the cloud security customer connection program or there's a compliance uh, information protection customer connection program, a few others out there. Um, all of them can be accessed and joined through that aka.ms WAC join CCP link, but they are different communities that cover different product sets. So for the M365 Defender community, obviously we'll be covering the M365 Defender product sets. In the cloud security community, they'll be covering some of the Azure security products, um, such as say Sentinel or uh, Microsoft Defender for cloud. Um, so they are different ones and you can sign up for multiple communities if you're interested all through that same link. Katie, what would you um, say to someone that is afraid to join the customer connection program because um, he doesn't want his tenant, their tenant to be affected or afraid of changes uh, that are not mature enough? Great question. Um, so in that case, when you first sign up for the customer connection program, there is the option to share with us your tenant ID. It is not a requirement to join the program. Um, so don't worry about sharing that tenant ID in the sign up process. And for the private previews, those are up to you if you want to share your tenant ID and be a part of the private previews, but you can still be a part of the community, joining the community calls, joining the discussions, uh, focus groups, etc., without sharing with us your tenant ID and flighting some of these preview features to that. Um, another thing that a lot of our customers will do is in you know, making sure that they're using a uh, dev test tenant instead of a production tenant if they do want to test a feature and aren't comfortable putting that into a production tenant. 
Um, so those are a couple options. You can totally take advantage of a lot that the CCP has to offer without having us even touch your tenant for previews. So only NDA is required basically? Only NDA, that's the big thing. Awesome. So I'll just follow that up with a question with from somebody who said they don't want to necessarily be a guinea pig. And that's what they wrote. Um, yep. Can they still contribute? So and I think you I think you sort of answered that, but I'll let you add on to that if you want. Yes, we do allow non guinea pigs to join the program as well. So you can still share with us based on our current product set that's generally available what you're experiencing, what your feedback is, still taking advantage of you know joining those calls, giving your feedback through the feedback surveys for our roadmaps without being a guinea pig for our private previews. So that's totally fine as well. Great. We have so many great questions about roadmap that we cannot publish and I see them and I, I have the eagerness in me to answer them like call them out publicly yes we're gonna do that and that and that but i guess that we have to wait uh until you join the ccp so we can katie we need to schedule a roadmap session asap yes um, uh, daniel, daniel, daniel Naeem, this is a question for you um are there plans to publish advanced hunting queries uh to learn.microsoft.com we publish on via github uh, while working with customers, but really good to provide some more samples for customers to utilize uh, the visibility from MDI. Don't see any reason why we cannot do that. I think this can be very, very easy to achieve. Um, I know how much people love uh, advanced hunting and in general, let's say that uh, we really believe that exposing all of our data um, I do invite everyone to contribute to GitHub with MDI uh, queries, either MDI only or combining MDI with other sources. Uh, we'll pick, we can pick some of the good ones from there and put them in the learn.microsoft.com. Um, maybe uh, even ship them with uh, how we do. Uh, uh, I think we have a community folder in advanced hunting with preloaded uh, queries, but obviously it will be easier to update in the learn Microsoft com. Love it. Yeah, and I love the fact that also with GitHub, it's uh, community driven and can also be a my query that I post up there can be enhanced by somebody else who makes it more efficient um, and adds to it. So. There is another question for you, Katie. Um, people are asking what is the required skill set in order to join the CCP? Ah, so typically we'll see those that are heavy users of the products that are in the CCP, say level 300 to 400 depth of knowledge, but we also need folks that aren't as familiar with the product and can provide their feedback on maybe why they're having troubles getting familiarized with it um, or maybe it's the onboarding experience or the documentation or things like that so we're wanting to hear the diversity of all voices small customers large customers partners mvps um there isn't a necessarily a, a bar of you have to be at a level 300 depth of knowledge to join the program at all we want to hear all voices because sometimes it's that you know, we're needing to do more around training um, and that would really help you and others in the community, private and public um, and our users as well. And it's not it's not just the voices of our heavy users that we want to have in there. So great question. Um, and you can also use this community as a way to learn and grow your skill set as well um, by learning and lurking and as well as providing your uh, your experiences. I think this is the last one that we could take. Uh, so many good questions in the chat uh, that we'll answer privately uh, or publicly. Um, but uh, I think this is, oh, I, I like it. Uh, what do you think about this? Is your first webinar uh, with us, right, Daniel? Also with yours, Katie, as well. The first public webinar, yeah. Usually all in the, the private community space for us. <laughs> yeah. I think the big question is um, what the attendees thought. So 
we'll be really excited to see the feedback. Uh, and uh, again, if if I didn't scare you off on on this call, you'll hopefully be listening to a lot me a lot more in the community. So really appreciate you bearing with my section and excited to engage more. Lovely, love you and I lovely, lovely and I will echo that as well. So we hope to see all of you in the community. Um, but with that, I think the presentation is a wrap. We'll continue to try and answer some of the questions that have come through the Q&A privately or publicly, as Naeem had mentioned. But Jacqueline, I will pass it over to you to wrap us up. Thank you so much. And thanks, Daniel, Katie and Daniel for today's webinar. Um, thank you to the rest of the team behind the scenes who helped to answer questions along the way. And most of all, I definitely want to thank all of our attendees for being part of our community and for joining us on these webinars. Today's recording and slides will be made available at aka.ms slash security community under the video and webinar recording section. In case we missed your question today, or if you have any additional questions, you can always ask them on our Microsoft 365 Defender Forum at aka.ms slash m365DTC. I'd also like to remind listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to also join our public community at aka.ms slash a security community. Lastly, we'd love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. So please take a minute to submit your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. I want to thank all of you for being with us today and we hope to see you next time. Bye bye.